Hello and welcome to this video on breeding in ARC. The aim of this video is to break down the process of breeding dinos in ARC. The info applies to both ASE and ASA. Breeding properly can take up a lot of time and it does help to understand the process, so that you can get the best results you want and as efficiently as possible. So let me break it down and explain it as clearly as I can. First of all, why bother breeding at all? Breeding dinos in ARC basically allows you to create a superior versions of the dinos you love. This could be to create an army for boss fights, or to create the ultimate utility dino or attack dinos, or even to create a bunch of pink Argentavises, <laughs> if you really want to. <laughs> there are many reasons to breed in ARC, and you can breed for stat purposes, as well as color purposes, or even both. Firstly, let's start with some relevant info I want to share about the taming side of things. Of course, obviously, you will need to tame dinos in order to start breeding them. A dino in the wild will have a maximum level of 150. At least, this is the standard. Please note that there are some, of course, unofficial servers that may have changed or adjusted this. There are a few dinos where the max wild level is actually higher, such as wyverns. When you tame a dino, based on the food that you use to tame it with, and whether or not they take any damage while taming, this, these two factors will influence your taming effectiveness percentage. You want this to be as high as possible. It shows you as well how many extra levels will be added once the dino is tamed. For carnivores, generally speaking, prime meat will do the trick. Some dinos have more specific food needs, so please check the ARC wikis because I'm not going over all the specific types of food per dino in this video. The correct kibble is also a great option, however, kibble normally takes a little more time to get because it requires specific ingredients to craft. I highly advise to avoid using just normal raw meat to tame, as this will decrease the taming effectiveness. When it comes to herbivores, very generally speaking, miso berries will do the trick, but kibble is even better. You may also be able to use any of the crops that you may have available, such as citronol, sava root, long grass, or rocker root, but these require growing, so you might not have these on hand. So otherwise, miso berries are preferred. Do not use the normal berries, such as the yellow, red, or blue ones, because these will decrease your taming effectiveness as well. When you down a dino to tame, it will have a certain level of points in each stat, health, food, melee, etc. When the dino has completed taming, the levels it gains from taming will be distributed randomly among the various stats. I do stress this is random. Let's look at an example. So here you can see the stats before we tamed and after taming was finished. And you can compare the stats. For example, the health went from 1971 up to 2555. You can roughly see by looking that certain stats may have been distributed more points than others, but the important thing here is to keep a record of the stats after taming but before you put any levels into your dino. These are going to be your base stats. I often use a spreadsheet, but you can also write them down or however you feel makes sense to keep a record of it. And what do we do with these base stats? Well, that brings me nicely to the next section on breeding. So in this section, I'm going to talk about breeding for stat purposes. Once you have a male and a female of the dino you want to breed and have noted down their base stats, something like this. As you can see, I've highlighted which stat from the male and female are the best of each. And in this case, obviously, the female only has the stamina stat, but sometimes you'll find that there's a bit of a mix from each parent which stats they have better. Once you have bred them and hatched the eggs, you can collect a few or you can do it one by one. That's up to you you can check the stats of the babies. The idea is that you want a baby with each best stat of their parent. Also very important to mention at this point, with breeding, your babies can actually get mutations. Check each baby for mutations. At this point, you do not want any mutations, at least not yet. It's really important to first get your, let's say, perfect stat dinos before considering moving on to adding in mutations. Mutations makes things a lot more complicated, um, and I will talk a bit more about mutations in another section, but for now, just when you uh, 
imprint on your babies, just check here. If you go to show ancestors, you can see if there's a one here on either side, one out of 20, for example, then you know that the, your um, dino has a mutation and you do not want that. It doesn't happen often that you get all your desired stats in one breed, in one go, in one baby. However, a baby can still be useful as it may carry more of the desired stats and is a higher level. Using our example, our male was a level 217 and this baby is a 236, which is quite a big jump in base level. You can see from the stats that it took on the stamina from the female, which is great, and the only stat that it took the lesser of is the oxygen. So this male is definitely worth keeping for further breeding as it's better than our original male. Our female was a level 179. This female is a level 215, meaning it took on some of the better stats from the male. This one is definitely worth keeping as it's a higher level female with more of the stats we need, and it's great to use to continue the breeding process. What is even better actually is this female took on the higher oxygen, which the new male misses. So therefore, once they're matured, breeding these two together will give us a great chance of getting our perfect stat Argy. It may seem brutal, but as you can see, the other hatched Argies are much lower level, meaning they took on more of the lesser stats. They're not really worth your time keeping. They will not aid in your breeding process at least. So, to be honest, you can just let them die. <laughs> also, another good thing to note is that one male can breed with multiple females at once. So sometimes the sex of the baby matters quite a lot. So if you hatch a male which is equal to or lower than the current breeding male you're using, there's little point to keeping it. However, if you get multiple females equal to or higher than your current breeding female, it may be worth keeping more, as you can then breed them more, get more eggs at once, and increase your chances of getting your perfect one. By breeding the best stats you find into one dino, that is how you increase the base level of your dino. This is the dino's level without imprinting or any leveling. Each stat makes up the base level of that dino. So even if certain stats, e.g. health, are the most important for the purposes of that dino, it is still best to get all the best stats to increase your level. Using this example here, you can see this is a base level 299. So this is without leveling, without imprinting, this is just the base level of this Argy. Obviously, this has come through quite a long period of breeding. In order to get the best ultimate dino, you'll need to keep taming high levels of the dino you're breeding. In this example, Argies. I suggest taming anything from level 130 to 150 wild for the best chances in finding good stats. As I mentioned, the points that go into each stat are distributed randomly, so a 150 Argy may not necessarily have better stats than a 135 Argy. Sometimes stats are relatively equally distributed, and sometimes you'll get a stat or two which have had a majority of the points assigned. Don't forget the food you provide and making sure your unconscious dino doesn't take any damage will influence the taming effectiveness, and therefore the amount of levels the dino will gain from taming. So basically, keep taming and keep adding in stats. Once you've got perfect ones, and if you tame another that has a slightly higher stat, then you can start to easily breed in the new stats. As I have mentioned the term imprinting, I just wanted to very quickly explain what that is. Imprinting is a way to improve the base stats of your dino as it grows up. It will ask for care, which includes, for example, giving it a cuddle, going for a walk, or it will ask for a specific food choice. Imprinting is great to do on dinos that you plan to use because it boosts your stats and gives the imprinter a bonus when using that dino, for example, an increase in melee damage. But I do not recommend imprinting your breeding dinos. This will change the stats, it will become confusing, plus it's a waste of time since those dinos should only be used for breeding and nothing else. The increased stats from imprinting will not pass on to babies. So what stats for what purposes? If you are breeding dinos for combat purposes, health, melee, and stamina are going to be your most important stats. If you're breeding utility dinos, generally the weight will be your most important stat. 
then you can break it down further. For example, ankylos, duties, and beavers can benefit from a higher melee damage. A carrier argi could also benefit from a higher stamina, helping you move resources from further away locations a lot easier. But what do you do when you've got perfect stat dinos? There's a few options. Firstly, you can keep on taming high levels in the chance that you'll find a better stat to breed in, but eventually you'll pretty much have the best stats you can find, and, gonna, and finding an, a new better stat is going to be quite rare. And this is after, you know, taming up in the hundreds of that type of dino. <laughs> Another thing you can do is move on to mutations. Once you have perfect stats and feel like you've tamed enough where it's unlikely you're going to find new stats, you can start breeding for mutations. The third option, of course, is to just enjoy your awesome high-level dinos and don't forget to keep a male and a female safe for breeding in the future. You can even keep more than one female to increase the output. Or finally, you could start breeding for color purposes, which brings me again nicely to my next section on breeding for colors. So yes, you can also breed for color purposes if you like. This may be something that's more desired during the arc events when you get funky colored wild dinos. It's way better than painting them, by the way. Each dino has color regions 0 to 5. So actually, there are 6 regions, basically. For example, ankylos use each region for a different color, or potentially for a different color, whereas Odirewolf, for example, only uses 3 of the color regions, as you can see in these examples. So if you want your perfect stat dinos to also look awesome, I recommend stat breeding first until you get your perfect ones, then start to breed in color regions that you like. Color breeding can get quite complicated and time consuming, especially if you're going for stats and color. If you are breeding purely for color, the level and stats are not as important, but I don't really see why you wouldn't do both. <laughs> the same concepts of breeding apply um, trying to get the stats you want with the, the colors in the regions you want. So honestly, that's why color breeding can be a bit of a headache. <laughs> breeding in general does take up a lot of time. Another factor that might make color breeding a little more complicated is that sometimes with mutations, you actually get a color mutation as well as with the stat mutation. Sometimes these are in regions you can't see, and other times they are, so it will be obvious. But I'll talk more about this in the next section of about mutations. A mutation is an increase in a random stat that you can get from breeding. The mutation will occur on either the patrilineal or the matrilineal side, in other words, from the male or female parent. In order to check for a mutation, go to the Show Ancestors tab in the inventory of your baby dino. A mutation will increase the level by two levels. So for example, if your base level is 285 and you see a baby with level 287, you may be able to assume that a mutation has occurred. Check against your base stats to see in which stat specifically the mutation has happened. Mutations will always come with a color region mutation, meaning one of the color regions on the dino will be different. As mentioned, not all of the regions are used on every dino, so sometimes there, if there's no obvious color change, the mutation may have occurred on a region that is not used by that particular dino. Just a quick little tip, you can pod your dino in order to see the different colors and their codes. As you can see here with the spino, it shows the color and the code for that color. Just remember that not all regions are used on each dino. Mutations disrupt the breeding process, assuming you are aiming to create your perfect stat dinos. Mutations are only useful once you have decided to move on to mutations as you've reached a high enough base level of stats. When you do want mutations, think about the use of that dino. For example, a combat dino will benefit from mutations in health, melee, or stamina. A utility dino in weight. The mechanics behind mutations is actually quite complicated and there are different approaches to adding in mutations. If you do start breeding for mutations, I do stress it's important to keep a clean copy of your male and female perfect stat dinos, so with no mutations at all. As males can breed with multiple females, ideally getting the mutations you want from the patrilineal side means you have a greater chance to pass on the mutation. 
You may even want to create separate lines of mutations, e.g. stacked melee mutations on the patrilineal side and stacked health mutations on the matrilineal side, to eventually breed these together and get all the mutations into one. For this video, I'm keeping to the basics about mutations. There are some great videos out there that go to a lot more in depth about this subject. Just remember, it's wise to really exhaust your chances of getting any better stats from taming wild dinos at first. If you start with mutations and you do happen to find a better stat from a wild dino, you pretty much have to start over again. So generally, the information I've provided can be applied to both Arc Survival Evolved and Arc Survival Ascended. However, there is one thing I would like to point out as a difference between the two. In Arc Survival Evolved, you used to have movement speed as a stat, which in Arc Survival Ascended, they have seemingly removed. From my experience breeding an ASE, sometimes you could get a higher base level baby without any better stats, making then the assumption there had been points put into a hidden stat, in other words, normally into movement speed. Movement speed couldn't be more than 100, but sometimes points were distributed into that stat without it actually increasing the stat, making the base level higher. So far in ASA, I have not experienced this happening, and this might be due to the fact that they indeed removed the movement speed stat. I'm not 100% sure, but just that is just something I just wanted to point out as a difference. And by the way, it, if that does happen, that is not a mutation. A mutation will not show up on the, the ancestry. It literally was just some kind of hidden stat glitch, which I assume were points distributed into movement speed, even though movement speed couldn't be more than 100. Please note that this is just my personal experience and my theory behind what was going on here in uh, Ark Survival Evolved. I may not be 100% correct, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> so, with all that information, I hope this has helped you to understand the process of breeding more clearly. It can seem kind of daunting at first, but once you get into the flow of it, I'm sure you will all be breeding some really awesome dinos. I'm also going to add some links in the description for helpful resources that you can use if you like. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this breeding guide.